You ready? Come on, girl. <laughs> we'll go down the river now. That's it. We got it. <laughs> Come on, you got it. You can do it. <laughs> Come here, over here. Down here. Down here. Come on, Bubs. Right here. There you go. Okay. Man, these rocks are slippery. It's brutal. Get up here. Hold on. Okay, wait for me. Alright. Here we go.
Oh man, what a day that was. A pretty good day, hey Pop? Hey Bubs, what do you think? And then uh, I threw a pack of elk sausages in the truck this morning when we left, frozen for her treat. Whoops, here we go. Once I stopped dragging her up and down the river. That was a good time out. I needed that one today. So much going on. Too much. And uh, last chance to go. Here you go. Here you go. Eat them up there. Last chance to catch a fish. Before uh, I gotta take Sarah to her surgery tomorrow. Hopefully I doesn't get cancelled again. And then, and then what? You can keep keep carrying on. Yeah, here you go. I'm sure she's gonna pass out after she eats this, right? There you go. I keep her on a keep her on a leash no matter what. And there's elk all over the place in here. And she's still a puppy. Who knows how long she would go, huh? If she uh, got loose and got on the ass of a bunch of elk. She probably think that would be the best thing in the world, chasing them around. And I'd lose her. And then somebody would probably shoot her. So, I keep her safe with me no matter what. Oh, what a day. But I hooked, uh, I hooked four steelhead today. First one in the morning, just about ripped the rod right over my hands. It wasn't expecting it, that's for sure. Now, Let's see what we got today. Hopefully it's all good, right? Sometimes, what a lot of people don't understand, but when you do any, I think if you do anything publicly, especially on on social media, or YouTube, or whatever, you get a lot of hate, man. No matter what, there's always some kind of kook that goes out of their way to find you. They don't know you, and they decide that you are their enemy. <laughs> Is it so weird? Anyway, here we go. Who do we got? Good day, Steve and Sarah, and all the kind, honest, no BS people. My name is David Snodgrass, and you can use my name because I don't care who thinks what. And I'm ready to tell you my truths, as I've come to understand them. Growing up, I always had an open mind about UFOs, aliens, evil, and angels. Looking back at my life, I realized more and more that some of my stranger experiences were Sabe related. But last night, Sunday, leap day, I got confirmation that I didn't expect, but I digress. Let me start when I was a child, probably 12 or 13. I stayed the night at a friend's from school, a luxury I usually didn't get to due to chores on the farm. We got up early that sa Saturday morning and he wanted to show me the pine barrens at the base of his mountain. So we grabbed some tobacco sticks for swords and off we went. We'd played an hour or so when this overpower powering feeling of dread and fear came over us. I asked if there were any black bears or mountain lions around and he of course said, not here, too close to the hard top road. He then said his grandma said there is quote, bad things in those woods and if we ever felt uneasy to leave immediately, end quote. We wasted no time exiting those woods but it took a while as we had worked our way back pretty far. The pressure never, never left us until we were back across the road inside the house. We were escorted out of there. Just out of sight, but could definitely tell it was big and bipedal. Fast forward, I'm, 18, I'm eight, eight or 18, I think you meant 18, with my first car driving down to town. No stoplight, a Piggly Wiggly and, five, and a five and dime. I stopped to give our local hermit a ride as I saw him exiting the hauler that led to his shack on the highest local mountain. A true mountain man, sorry. A true mountain man always carrying a pistol and we had to roll the windows down as he took a bath once a year, if he needs it or not, his words. I asked the fella, Homer, RIP jokingly. Hey, have you ever seen any Bigfoot up here? He said, yes, they come around up there enter just beyond the firelight. Then he said, they just want to be left alone like him. I laughed and said, okay. I then felt him staring and I turned to his gaze. Homer wouldn't tolerate a thief or a liar. Hey, come on. okay, gotta stay over here, all right, Bobby? Come on, come on down, come on over here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Your snack is eight. 
That's the wrapping. Okay, come here. Come on down. Oh, shit. You're gonna stay there, right? Just hang out there for a minute. For a few. Sorry, guys. Enter just beyond the firelight. He then said, they just want to be left alone like him. I laughed and said, okay. And then I then felt him staring and turned to his gaze. And Homer wouldn't tolerate a thief or a liar. He said, quote, you asked, and I'm no dang liar, end quote. I knew at that moment this man was telling me the truth while searching my eyes. I was hoping he was going to draw that piece. I apologized and said, how do you know they want to be left alone? He said, they told me. I said, do you speak a form of engine? He said, no, they talk to you in your head. He said, always give them some tobacco. I believed him then, and even more so now. It was getting long, so I just ended with this. Driving off the dead-end dirt road that generations of my family grew up on after visiting my 75-year-old dad, I always looked for deer coming off the hills to cross the road to the hayfield. And then I saw them. A set of huge, self-illuminated eyes. They were golden color. I mean, shining like gold. I kept going because I'm at a crossroads of going to that old man's shack to see if I can see one, but I don't want to bring any hitchhikers home. Thank you for giving us a place to share. And here's a piece of advice that saved my life once. If you are ever in a bad way, something has went sideways, remain calm and you'll make good decisions. Much love, David. Here you go. Agreed. It's like my friends or first responders, they always tell each other on the radio, ABCs. Always be calm. And I get it, man. I get you don't want any hitchhikers coming home if you go intentionally look for and see them, right? Intentionally. What do you think? Hmm? What do you think? Appreciate you send that. Send that in, man. It's another one titled Being Escorted. Just a question for all the members. While being escorted out of the woods, has anyone said anything in their mind or out loud to the forest people? Was there any kind of response? Thanks for Pennsylvania. All right, check out the comment section below the video and uh, we'll see if anybody chimes in. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Find another pile of emails without. This is a pretty big one. Doesn't say red, so we're going in. I'm sure, she'll let me know if something's wrong, right? Maybe. Greetings, Steve, and thank you for allowing all of us to share the truth at the round table of knowledge. I never take shit from the government or money fakers out there. I started following your channel before the Sabe topic was being shared. I'm a straightforward, no-nonsense guy and I don't take crap from anyone, especially the woke liberal community trying to rewrite history and biological definitions. I grew up in the Northwest, Pacific Northwest, hunting and fishing all my life. I lived for it. It was my peace of mind that kept me balanced and recharged me from the day-to-day -day grind making a living. The doctors haven't taken that away from me yet. I still work for the largest aerospace employer in the U.S., a design engineer. Please do not share my name. It's difficult to go in every day and listen to them push the woke agenda. What a joke. I can tell you they have tools that the general public would not believe. They see everything and know everything. Nothing is by them. If you appear on the radar and become a problem, you will cease to exist if they decide. You will disappear faster than a French fry at a seagull feeding frenzy. They track us like sheep. Sorry for the rant, Steve. Too much coffee today. My stories are not as wild and scary as many, but here it goes. Maybe there is a piece of knowledge in there for someone. My first encounter was back in the late 70s. We were backpacking into Upper Liana Lake in the Olympic Mountains to get away as boys to do some fishing. It was a good hike, about 15 miles round trip and steep with many switchbacks. The fishing was great. We were the only people around that particular weekend. It was early summer with a few patches of snow still about. 
we're going to camp three or four days and then move to no new, then move to a new location. We pitched our tents right next to each other at about 30 feet from the lake's edge. We set up camp and started fishing for dinner. The fishing was awesome. We had a fresh pile of trout on the stringers and a roaring fire going to cook them on. We brought Noah a barbecue grate which worked wonders for camp cooking. I'm always the cook because I always brought the good food and the seasonings. We finished dinner, fresh trout and steamed rice and cleaned up. Hung our gear on the guideline in the tree and put the stringer of fish back in the water to keep them cool. God's fridge. So we could have a good breakfast before exploring more. The four of us gathered around the fire and roasted a torpedo and got ready for bed. We always kept a clean camp to keep the bear and couches at a minimum. I always run into bears whenever I go. I seem to be a magnet for them. We always come armed though. We would always bring lady fingers, firecrackers for bear trouble along with bear spray. We, always, we also brought our pistols as well. Now, before I get to the event, we never thought Bigfoot was real. We'd all seen the movie Boggy Creek and got the hell scared out of us, but never believed it was real. I'd asked my grandmother, an old German immigrant and lifelong hunter who along with my father taught me much of what I know about the wilderness. They just laughed at me and told me they didn't believe it was real and had never seen anything, although my father said he came across a ter terrible spell one morning trip that they could not locate. Probably meant smell, but he spelled spell by accident. He said it was very bad. It was early morning before first light when something woke me and my buddy Danny up. It sounded heavy and we thought a bear was creeping around camp. We could hear a few twigs breaking, so we spoke with hand signals pointing in the direction of the sounds. We could only hear one moving around, but it sounded like a real heavy person walking back, walking and not a bear shuffle. We could feel it in our bedding and ground when it walked. We had no idea what it was. I peeked through the rain fly and nothing was there. We couldn't see a damn thing as it was, it was still pitch black out. So I grabbed a pack of firecrackers lit the fuse and tossed them way out away from the tents. We both had our guns at the ready, but man, we had no idea what was coming and all hell broke loose. We couldn't see them, but we could hear them running away in all directions. There must have been four or five of something big and bears don't group like that. It felt like we were in the middle of a cattle stampede. Everything was vibrating from the running away and then it happened. Something cut loose with a yell scream that scared the hell out of us. It was ear piercing like a train horn. We were all panicked. We built the fire back up and sat back to pack until the sun came up. No more noises or heavy footed running for the rest of the night, but we all felt watched. We got out of there at first light. We never saw any of them. We could only smell and hear them. That rotten meat, rancid sweat and cesspool smell and the god-awful scream. How the hell can anything make that noise? It's so loud it pierces your entire body. We we're just scared shitless. When the sun came, sun came up, we looked around camp but we didn't see anything before we left. And needless to say, this started off a 40-year search for the truth. Not only Sasquatch, but the UFO issue, aliens and other entities. I had no idea the truth would lead to finding a corrupt government, child trafficking, UFOs, and finding Sasquatch is real, as well as aliens and much, much more. It's amazing just how much truth is out there if you open your mind and search. The governments of the world have known the truth about all this for a very long time and continue to hide the truth from the people. We have a small group of elected and non-elected entities running the planet to their benefits, not ours. I'll try and find some time to write my second incident, and this time I saw one for a short period of time doing its spider creep. God awful creepy how it moved. Okay, here we go. Did I share that? Okay, this is an odd one. Uh, you. There's a there's a GoFundMe here, but you don't want to share your name. That, that sounds familiar. All right, that's a paragraph for my eyes only. I'll keep that to myself for now. 
And there you go. Email me back, all right? Email me back with what else you know and what's up. Please, I appreciate you sending that, man. I appreciate you sending that. What's this one? Tack on some more once I get home. She's a little, come here, come here, boss. She's a little restless. And I'm starving. It's getting later. Sarah's gonna be a little concerned, I imagine, by now, but. This is titled Here to Confirm How Strange Oklahoma Can Be. Hi, Steve. I hope this finds you well. Everything I include is fine to share. I found your channel three years ago simply for the hunting content. As you moved into the Sasquatch topic, I didn't know I was about to go for a ride too. I'll start with my overall takeaway. I don't know how or why, but damn, I'm thankful I never actually saw them. I guess I instinctively knew not to look, somehow. My experiences will back up the importance of trusting your sixth sense, knowing the common signs, and listening to the locals slash natives. Even though at the time of my worst experiences, I didn't actually think there was more to our world. I genuinely never I genuinely never understood what caused the fear and dread until you started sharing the stories of this community. I've now connected the dots somewhat. I thank you all for that because I had struggled with making sense of it until recently, but I've never avoided the outdoors. Even though I fear I've missed some time on one occasion. So this is uncomfortable to type about. I'm only 34, so it's all fairly recent and I've got a lot of time left for more crazy shit. For some context, I count myself as a lucky one with a great father family with nothing but love for the outdoors. I grew up in North Texas, Southeast Oklahoma, and I cut my teeth hunting there and Southwest Texas, Big Lake and San Angel Angelo, San Angelo, Angelo areas, sorry. I think I'm too little tired here. I'm now in Florida. I never experienced anything in Texas, but Southwest Oklahoma is different. I'm given locations because it matters. And these are already known areas, but can't be publicly accessed. Prior to moving, I'd spent the last 10 years hunting near Boswell, Oklahoma and McIntyre land near the Stringtown prison, about 8,000 acres in total, all private land with only a handful of hunters ever being there. Those who know the area will know how untouched much of it is. I wish I would have known the signs then because I lived them all a few times. Dead still woods, no animals, nausea, fear, the smells. At the time, I just wasn't aware of the reality I know now, so I never associated it to the beings or anything of the sort. So here were the signs I was given and ignored per location, as well as the experiences. This is already a long email, so I'll do my best to summarize. Important note, majority of the weird happened when I had my bow, no gun. What are you looking at? Hmm? McIntyre land. There's a huge power line cut up and down the hill slash mountain. From the start, we were warned of mountain people at the top slash edge of the property and never go near. Now we actually have rough people that live in the mountains. So I didn't question that, but I know now they weren't people. I think she smells elk. A man couldn't have scared my six foot six, 250 pound fit and capable self out of a deer stand that many times. Walking back to my quad with so much fear, I wanted to puke. 
This was happening in two distinct areas near that power line at the edge of the property. I could have saved myself a lot of trouble had I known what it was other than questioning my sanity. Our camp was harassed a couple times, but we sleep hard when in the woods, so we chalked it up as a black bear. That's hilarious to think about now. I could detail so much more about it, but it's the exact same as so many others. Near Boswell, this property had a land guardian, I'll call him. He's an odd old fellow, doesn't talk much, limited faculties. I believe he tried to warn us and always kept tabs on us while on the property to the scariest experience. I was so pumped about this spot, I found, I found for a bow stand deep in heavy trees that fed out over a creek bottom with a few small ponds around and some short rocky cliff, rocky cliff faces. Beautiful country to experience until you come across missing 411. So now I just feel lucky to be typing this with a new perspective and not a statistic. By this time I had already experienced a puking dread at the other location so I was a bit more alert than previously had been. The next part is still hard to get to grips with. It was my first hunt on that spot and seemed normal most of the day I sat there. The problem is I don't remember getting out of the stand at dusk. I just remember a sense of feeling lost and scared about 20 yards from the ladder. The bow still hung in the tree. I got a grip and started to make my way out. About half a mile hike through the dense trees, but I was being paced. I never saw it, I only heard it, as there were no other noises. I never took my eyes off the ground in front of me. I didn't want to know. A predator would have had me, so this so this is, wasn't an animal. It stopped when I stopped. And until I neared the pasture, the walking started to amplify around me. The best I can describe is when you turn your TV surround sound on and off, and it was terrifying. And I've never gone back there again. Again, there are a lot of more, there are a lot more details, but for the sake of attempted brevity, I leave it all at this. I still don't remember how I got on the ground. I'm fairly certain I'm not the only one in my group that has some experiences. I'd say I'm partially sharing this on the chance one of them is watching you too. I obviously never brought it up to any of them. Macho shit, probably. Although I did just talk to my dad about it a couple of months ago. That landed with mixed reaction, lol. I'm happy to say I now feel as prepared and comfortable as ever since compiling enough information and understanding from you, Mr. Carpenter and Mr. Pilatus, I sincerely thank you and this community for my outdoor sanity. But please, please, please pay attention when any local person goes out of their way to warn you and have a GPS locator. Things could have easily gone different for me, and I've recently become aware of missing persons in those areas. Scary shit. Heath. P.S. If you ever find that sign-up sheet for the good guy team, I'm right there with you. I also got a wicked mountain lion story from Texas I'll send separately or in reply. Yeah, send it, man. Send it. I love hearing those stories. I got a bunch myself. I appreciate, really appreciate you sending that in. Appreciate you sending that in, man. And I'm glad you found some sort of understanding through everybody's truth being shared here it means it's working right now where's another one I should I get going now there's a whole bunch all right let me read this actually hold on a second what's that This is a screenshot. Let's read it. Steve, your program is riveting. Keeps you on the edge of your seat wanting more. I have experienced an encounter as several of my friends and acquaintances in my surrounding community have. I've lived in a special place in Eastern Oregon called Hell's Canyon and Wallowa Mountains. Area since 1975 and I was 16 years old. Isn't there a bunch of big uh, big orange sheep there and sturgeon I think around there in the river 
I'm now approaching 62 years of age. I've logged the woods and hunted this area ever since. There's a lot of activity in this area in the 80s and 90s, sightings and encounters from good, reputable, good people and friends during this time. When we as people in the community talked or mentioned our experiences with our other locals, we were of course laughed at and ridiculed. I was kicked off a website that was supposedly interested and welcomed stories about Bigfoot in the Northwest for commenting about a story that someone told about a good friend of mine. I thought, screw you guys, I was just trying to clear up what inconsistencies in the story that was being shared as there was some disinformation about the encounter. Anyhow, as a good successful hunter and outdoor enthusiast, I have noticed a decline of stories and encounters of these beings in this particular area since the late 1990s. Oh, hold on, I gotta find, I'm in the second screenshot. Most of the activity now seems to be north of us around the Enterprise area, north into Washington State throughout the Blue Mountains. I'm wondering why the activity of these beings has shifted out of our area and further north. Is it past wildfires? Is it human activity, which in my opinion hasn't increased that much in this area, as it is pretty vast? God knows it's not from declined habitat, as Oregon doesn't log shit anymore in this state. Anyway, feel, feel free to comment and or use my name if shared. Maybe it will get some of my buddies and people in the community to share their experiences they have had that didn't have the platform in which to do so. Thanks for all you do, Steve, for bringing this topic to light. Okay, man. Uh, Brian Lindsay. There you go, Brian. If your friends are here, they just, they're going to recognize exactly what you just shared and what I just said. And I just said your name. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'll do one more. One more and then I'll get going. Ruby's having a little cat nap with her full tummy. Lucky dog. Okay, one more. Steve, we know Bigfoot is real. Santa, not so much. I'm 62, retired engineer, spending most of my time in Wyoming. New Mexico, Washington State, where I live today. I've had numerous stories since I moved to Eastern Washington 20 years ago. Below is a synopsis of more important encounters. Story number one. In the spring of 2010, while mushroom hunting in southeastern Washington, I came across a single bare foot track in a groundwater seep about 16 inches long and 6 inches wide. My mind opened considerably that day. I had one witness with me. Story number two. In October 2015, my wife and I spent several days in our fifth wheel at the edge of the heavy brush of the Tucanon River at an RV park. It feeds into the Snake River about six miles down near Starbuck, Washington. On Sunday morning while drinking coffee and looking out the back picture window of our small gnash toward the river, I spied what appeared to be a perfect black cone head peering between the branches from behind a large tree about 40 yards away. This lasted for about 15 minutes with absolutely no indication of movement. And that October sun was to the southeast and behind, washing out any definition. My mind kept repeating, no way. It must be a burned out old tree trunk. We're too low in elevation in a valley. Upon returning with my second cup of coffee, I exclaimed to my wife that it was gone. My wife had no idea what I was staring at. The mind plays many many a rationalized thought to avoid considering a phenomenon in that season were severe fires in the higher country. The firefighters worked hard to protect the farms and structures including this valley. Higher elevation was nothing but black cinder. After some time I walked back to the tree to look for track. The ground was hard pan but I but I did see where the figure had been looking through the branches. On tiptoes and arm raised I could not reach it. It must have been at least eight plus feet tall. Later, we took the two dash hounds for trail walk down along the same river. And as the trail turned back away from the river and into the farmlands, I first smelled a strong ammonia or urine smell. It quickly turned into a very nasty roadkill smell, but 
emanated for at least 10 or more yards. I started to veer into the brush towards the river to understand the source, but the missus convinced me, almost panicked, that we need to get out of there. My instinct agreed. Sometime that evening, my wife complained that the wretched smell had drifted down into camp. And later that evening, I took one of the dogs out for his business. It was dark, about 9 o'clock. And I heard a long, god-awful scream from downriver. It was not a BF loser O high-pitched scream. It was a basal, guttural, and long-lasting. Lung capacity must have been huge. The following morning, I went back to the smell, thinking it might be a deer carcass, since muzzleloading season was ongoing. No more smell, it was gone. A few weeks later, I went back looking for track on the river's south side in the farm fields from where I felt the screams had came and there was nothing. I stopped in for lunch at the local bar and grill and learned in hushed tones that a longtime local witnessed a Sasquatch running across the road toward the Snake River. Ah, vindication, I felt better. And this past salmon season, my buddy's friend had one peering through his RV on the Snake River late at night, just north of my experience. Story number three. Four retired engineers, myself included, banded together in 2018 to search more, since all of us have had experiences. Rural locals in Washington are much more open-minded about the subject, especially if they spend time in the wilds of Washington and Oregon. Though we have had bizarre experiences, odd out of place bird-like noises, many a broken tree trunk, fallen trees, sudden sixth sense of get the hell out of here, tree knocks, one whoop with musky wet dog smell and nighttime whistles. I just wish to recount the oddest story that leaves me to believe these are highly intelligent beings that either understand English language or telepathic or both. I I and one other camped in a well-known area in July 2018 in northeast Oregon near the Washington border. The campground was empty, so we chose a spot about 50 yards uphill from the prefab camp toilet and pond. We set up camp midday and rested in our chairs. Just idle chatter. My buddy suddenly looked at me and questioned if I had heard a wood knock down below near the spring. And I had not. But moments later, we heard a second one much closer. Then a third even closer. Finally, a fourth knock directly in front of us, but in heavy brush and trees. There is nothing more. But having seen one, there was no way I was going to go check it out. Late afternoon, we did some minor hiking close to the spring. We tried a few wood knocks and predator calls. There are coyote and wolves in this area, but nothing odd was experienced. As it grew dark, I convinced my buddy of no campfire safety true but it also dulls the sense of hearing smell and eyesight there's a beautiful crescent moon that night my buddy chose to sleep in his pickup i in my two-man tent which was set between the pickup and our chairs and card table i've slept i've slept i have sleep apnea so my battery and voltage changer probably meant charger was outside tent while my mask made its standard darth vader breathing inside I'm guessing that around 2 a.m. I was startled by a single twig snap just outside my tent. The hair raised my entire body. I was paralyzed with fear. A fear I have never experienced before. My, my mind kept screaming, play possum, play possum. I know there's no bear outside. I have, I have had bear in camp before. There's no nasty smell. But I felt a presence and a fear. Uncertain if my paralyzed posture was induced by me or something else. I only had a 45 ACP in my tent, only enough to ward off people, not this. That dread lasted for a couple of hours. I finally eased and fell back to sleep. I woke around 6 a.m. completely exhausted. I got up and looked out to see that both my cowboy hat and my ball cap were now laying below the card table brims down on the dirt, softly touching one another, and both facing in the same direction as where the moon had been that night. Oddly, before bedtime, my buddy and I discussed the proper way to place a cowboy hat upside down so you don't miss misshape in the brim. Never in the dirt. I know it wasn't my buddy that did that, as he is not a joker, and I would have heard him getting in and out of his truck. 
past the tent to the table, and he knows I'm always armed. This is the same area along the line of the wood knocks, the whoop, the loud screeching, the bird sounds, and my buddy's trail cams, new batteries died within a week, twice, with no pictures. So, more recently, I tried metal dousing rods along that line of wood knock travel on both sides of the spring-fed pond. The rods became quite erratic, turning me in a tight circle, just along that line and near where the batteries had died. So, Steve... There's a lot going, there's a lot going that does not fit the normal wildlife. And it is understandable why the BF organization thought my story bullshit because it does not fit their narrative. If a being was in camp that night, it could have squashed me like a bug and I knew it. Instead, it seemed to communicate in humor, teasing that it had received the message about the hats and just wanted to let me know it was there. Wow, and LOL. I've not camped since. But I'm gaining mind strength, and I plan to. I have taken a number of solo hikes in rural mountains of the North Cascades, but the experiences follow and haunt. I'm much more aware of my surroundings now, and that can be a good thing. Okay, I don't think you said to say, share your name, did you? Uh, I'm not sure if I was supposed to share your name or not. I'll keep it. I'll keep it private. And there you go. Another experiencer. Who's into it but not into it, right? <laughs> into it but not into it. What do you think, Bubs? Is it time to go home? Get me, get me some food now? Now that your tummy's full. And if I was smart, I would have lit a fire and cooked some of those sausages and ate some half of it for myself. What was I thinking? Hey. Huh? Anyway, there you go. It's cold. I think it was minus seven on, on the drive in this morning. Lots of snow in the hills, but none on the ground down here. That was a good day. I got to feel four different steelhead today, and I got my hands on a real beauty. Another great day for me in the in the real world that's what I live for I live for those moments I love them and I encourage everybody no matter what's going on make sure that you do what you love to do just do it a little bit if you can if you can't just do a little bit do something that you love to do all right and don't forget to take your shoes and socks off and stand on the ground and ground yourself out fairly often that's important too i could probably rattle off a whole pile of important shit that i can encourage people to do but i better get my ass in gear share my story how to hunt.com get it off your chest get the truth share it all right anyway you ready to go bubs you want to go home <laughs> wonder what they think when we're speaking to them you know they always look us dead in the eye though right they look you dead in the eye like, I know you're looking me square in the eye. Do you know what I'm saying? Or no? You want to go home? She doesn't give a shit where she goes as long as she's with me. I notice that. I'll be back shortly. All right. Next cast. We'll get him. There we go. Chomp that. Chomp that hook, Mr. Steel. Let's go. Chomp that hook. Here it comes. Right there. Oh. Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. Yep, yep, nope. Oh. oh boy. All right, here we go. Chomp away.
Oh, there we go. No, oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. There's a fish. Yes. Oh, it's a good one too. Holy. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish. Stay on. Yeah. Yes. Just want to come out of the water. Oh, that's a big one. Holy cow. Uh-oh, 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 one of the Oh man, that's a big fish. Sweet, don't go on the log. Oh, it's tangled up on something. Oh, it's tangled on his tail. Oh no. Oh, there he goes, he's free now. Oh, come on. Oh, that's a big fish. Come on, baby. Uh-oh, don't go into the log. <laughs> Not the log! Not the log! No! Oh. Uh-oh, he's going to China. Uh-oh, uh not under the log. Not on the log. Oh, he's going under the log! No! 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 Oh, that sucks! Oh, does that ever suck? Shit! <laughs> Oh, damn. Under the log. Oh, that sucks. <laughs>